In this session we will study the detailed derivation of the de Huckel on Sager conductance equation. Let's start with the model suggested by de and Huckel for an electrolyte solution. Here we assume that each ion is surrounded by an ionic atmosphere with a charge opposite to that of the central ion. The ionic atmosphere will have a spherical symmetry. The spherical symmetry occurs only if the ion is not exposed to an applied electrical field or a shearing force causing movement of the ions. The symmetry of the ionic atmosphere will be disturbed if we apply an electric field. For example, if a particular kind of ion moves to the right it has to build up its ionic atmosphere to the right. As a result, the charge density to the left gradually decays and that to the right gradually increases. See the animation. For simplicity I have shown only a single positive ion and a few negative ions. Here. We use a quantity called time of relaxation of the ionic atmosphere. It is the rate at which the atmosphere to the right forms and that to the left dies away. It is denoted by theta. The decay of the ionic atmosphere occurs exponentially. So the time required for the ionic atmosphere to fall actually to zero is infinite. However. It has been shown that the surrounding atmosphere falls virtually to zero in the time given by 4q theta after the removal of the central ion. You should remember that theta represents the rate of appearance and disappearance of the ionic atmosphere. Q is defined by an equation. For binary electrolytes like potassium chloride or magnesium sulfate the valence of positive and negative ions will be the same. Such electrolytes yield only two ions. So the above equation could be written as Now the time required for the ionic atmosphere to fall virtually to zero will be For aqueous solutions at 25 degrees Celsius, theta could be written as follows. For most solutions other than acids and bases the molar conductivity at 25 degrees Celsius is about 120 semen centimeters square per mole. Hence we have. Thus the time of relaxation of the ionic atmosphere for a binary electrolyte is inversely proportional to the molar concentration of the solution and to the valence of the ions. The asymmetry of the ionic atmosphere due to the time of relaxation will thus result in a retardation of the ion moving under the influence of an applied field. This influence on the speed of an ion is called relaxation effect or asymmetry effect. In addition to the relaxation effect, two more factors are there which retard the movement of ions in an electrolyte solution. These are the electrophoretic effect and the frictional force of the solvent. Thus altogether there are three forces which retard the motion of an ion. These are the relaxation force, the electrophoretic force, and the frictional force of the solvent. We have mathematical equations for calculating all these forces. In their derivation of the relaxation force, Debye and Huckel did not consider the natural Brownian movement of the ions. But Onsager considered this factor and deduced the following equation for the relaxation force. Above discussions did not consider the presence of solvent molecules. Under the applied potential the ionic atmosphere is moving with its associated solvent molecules in a direction opposite to that of the central ion. This increases the viscous resistance of the solvent and causes retardation to the movement of the ion. This is analogous to the resistance acting against the movement of a colloidal particle in an electric field. Assuming the applicability of Stokes law to this situation Debye and Huckel derived the following expression for electrophoretic force. The expression for the frictional force of the solvent which is related to the mobility of the ion is given below. 
The terms involved in these expressions are given on the right side. Imagine an ion is moving through the solution with a steady velocity under an applied potential. The driving force on the ion due to the applied field is opposed by the above three forces. Hence we write. Dividing equation 1 throughout by KIV and rearranging. If the potential gradient is 1 volt per centimeter, V in electrostatic unit will be 1 upon 300, replacing V in equation 2. Rearranging the above equation, we get If we assume infinite dilution, we can find out an alternate expression for the first term in the right hand side of equation 4. Under infinite dilution kappa will be zero. So we get But, we know that, ui0 is related to lambda i0, which is the ion conductance at infinite dilution. The relation is Further, if we assume that the electrolyte is completely dissociated, the degree of dissociation will be unity. This is true for solutions of strong electrolytes even at appreciable concentrations. So we write. Making these substitutions in equation 4, we get. Making a slight change to the second term in the bracket. Utilizing equation 5. Multiplying equation 8, throughout by f. You may remember the expression for kappa given earlier. We also know that, reciprocal of it gives the thickness of the ionic atmosphere. Here Ni is the number of ions of type I. Converting into molar concentration, where Na is the Avogadro constant and Ci is the concentration of ion of type I, we have Modifying kappa using this expression. Since we have only positive and negative ions, the summation in the above equation could be modified. Introducing the above expression for kappa in equation 9 and utilizing the standard values of F. Epsilon, Boltzmann constant, and Avogadro constant, we get C plus and C minus represent the concentration of the ions in mole per liter. This could be replaced by the molar concentration of the electrolyte, C, which will be same for both ions. Molar conductivity of an electrolyte is the sum of the conductivities of the constituent ions. Writing equation 11 separately for positive and negative ions and adding together we could write.
For further simplification of equation 12, we need the value of omega. For that we consider a uni-univalent electrolyte. For such an electrolyte, both the ions will have a valence of 1. Moreover, Q will be 0.5 in such cases. Thus omega becomes Substituting for omega in equation 12, we have The above equation now becomes A general form of equation 13 could be written as follows, where A and B are constants dependent only on the nature of the solvent and temperature. Equations 12, 13, and 14 are different forms of the debye huck alonsager equation. For water at 25 degrees Celsius, A equals 60.2 and B equals 0.229. For methanol these values are 156.1 and 0.923 respectively. Onsager equation shows that molar conductivity is a linear function of the square root of concentration. Hence a plot of lambda m against square root c must be a straight line. This provides the validity of the huck alonsager equation. Remember, equation 14 is valid for a uni-univalent electrolyte only. Further support for Onsager theory is provided by conductivity measurement of a number of electrolytes made at 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. At both the temperatures, the observed slope of the plot agrees with the calculated result, within the limits of experimental error.